Hi. As you remember, we've been studying North and Central America this year. And to help us with that study, I thought I would tell you a story that takes place in an area called the Northwest along the ocean and the other inlets, the Pacific Northwest. And always there have been Native Americans living here. There still are. They're all over the United States and they're all over Central America. And these Native Americans in this area we call the Pacific Northwest Coast Native Americans. And the story takes place in what we now call British Columbia. British Columbia is right north of here. And as you can see, there's a totem pole over my shoulder. And this could have been carved in British Columbia. It was actually carved in Alaska. And it happens to belong to my family. And this area has so many incredible things about it. So there's ocean, there's plenty of salmon, and the Northwest Coast Native Americans relied heavily on the salmon. That's one of the main ways that they ate. And this is going to be an important part of this story. And another part is the cedar tree. As you can see overhead, we have trees, and some of those are cedar trees. And we're gonna sing this song to the cedar trees. And another part of this culture has always been canoes. And I happened to carve this canoe and I'm showing it to you because it's going to be an important part of this story. And I carved this canoe with knives that are traditional, that Native Americans have been using something like this for hundreds of years. Now there's metal in these tools. In the, in the old days there was not, but now, uh, as you can see, the metal is very sharp and this is called an ads. And we also have a sea knife and a straight knife. And this is used for carving the details. That's how smaller chunks of wood are carved out. So again, we have totem poles and I have a picture to show you that also has totem poles in it. And it gives you an idea of the general area and setting of this story. So here we have a canoe, of course, and we have these homes back here we call longhouses. And the reason they're called that is because longhouses have traditionally, or for hundreds of years, been very long, long enough to hold moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, brothers and sisters, the whole family clan. And also we have totem poles in the background. Like the, so this is a smaller version of these. And as you can see, water is an important part of this culture. So we're going to go ahead and start the story now. Once a very long time ago, there were two children that lived in a beautiful village. They looked out and they could see craggy peaked mountains with snow on them. And they also had lots and lots of water around the ocean on one side and inlets on the other side. These children didn't go to school like you and I have. These children were homeschooled, kind of like you're being homeschooled now, by their moms and dads, by their aunts and uncles, grandmas, grandpas, in the great outdoors. So they would learn the things that they needed to learn to have a good life. They learned to hunt, they learned to pick berries, find the ones that were poisonous, find the, find the ones that were safe. They learned how to dig clams and find other food. And one of the w main ways that they found salmon was to go to their family fish trap, which was like almost like a wooden box underneath the water and sitting a little bit above the water too. And it was a trap so the salmon would swim inside it and get caught and then they would be able to take the salmon and eat it. So the children in this village learned to do these things, but they couldn't do them by themselves. They watch people carving totem poles and they watch people going to the family fish trap, but they could never go by themselves. And so the story takes place when there was a great sickness that came across the land and the grandmas and grandpas became very sick and their moms and dads, they spent most of their time taking care of their elders, the grandmas and grandpas. And 
they didn't have time to go to the family fish trap and find the fish and bring them back. And the salmon were especially that time of year very important because the berries had all dried up. So one morning, very early, the two children, a brother and a sister, were woken up by their grandmother. And she said, you need to go to the family fish trap yourself and harvest the salmon and bring it back because we're running out of food. Your mom and dad can't go. We can't go. Everybody's taking care of everybody else. So you need to go. Well, the children looked at each other and back at their grandmother and said, but that's forbidden. We've never been able to go by ourselves. We don't even really know where it is. And the grandmother said, you know, you are the bravest and strongest and wisest of all the children in this village. I know you can do this and I'll show you on a map that I'm going to draw and you'll be able to find it. Well, the children thought this is a great adventure and we can help everybody. We could even be heroes. So they said they would do it and they gathered everything they need, needed and put it in their canoe. They got, grabbed baskets for the salmon and blankets and a little bit of food and off they shoved. And as they moved out into the water, they were feeling brave and afraid at the same time. So they sang this song to help them feel stronger and even more brave. And they knew that the earth takes care of them. So they sang this song to the earth. The earth is our mother and she takes care of us. The earth is our mother and we take care of her. The salmon are our sisters and our brothers. They all are our relations and we take care of them. Her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take her sacred ground we walk upon. With every step we take. And as they sang, they noticed that the wind was whipping up and the storm was building and their canoe started to have water pouring over. The waves were getting higher. And so they knew they needed to find shore quickly. They looked around and yes, there was shore right there. So they paddled fast and hard until they could shove their way up onto the shore. And as they did, they realized they needed to take care of themselves really quickly by building a fire and getting their blankets out because it was starting to rain. And they ate a little bit of food and settled down into their cozy, warm blankets. And they looked up and what do you suppose they saw? They saw cedar trees and they were sheltering them from the wind and the rain. And so they sang this song to the cedar trees. Oh, cedar tree, clap your hands and sing to me, way, way. Way, oh cedar tree, clap your hands and dance with me. Way, way, way. And as they sang, they started to get really tired. So their eyelids drooped and their song became more slow. And they fell, yes, into a deep slumber. Well, the next morning they woke up to a beautiful, bright blue, sunny sky and they were so relieved. There wouldn't be any storms on the water that day. And so they looked around and thought, how are we going to find our way from here? But they realized they knew that rock over there and those trees over there were on their left side as they came in. So they went back out again into the water and started to paddle in the right direction. That's called navigating. So as they did, they realized that the ocean was taking good care of them. So they sang this song. The ocean is the beginning of the earth. The ocean is the beginning of the earth. All life comes from the sea. All life 
comes from the sea. And they were singing a song, hoping that the ocean had brought plenty of salmon to their fish traps. They didn't know what they would find, but they were hoping. And all day they paddled, and all day they sang, until finally, well, actually it wasn't all day, it was about lunchtime, they saw it, the structure. They saw the fish trap in the water just the way they had remembered it when their grandmother and grandfather had taken them there. And they saw that, in fact, there was many, many, many salmon in the water. And they were so grateful. And they stopped and they thanked the salmon for giving up their lives for them. And they began harvesting the salmon, putting them in their boat. And as they shoved off, they sang this song. <clears throat> The ocean is the beginning of the earth, just as I had been before. The ocean is the beginning of the earth. All life comes from the sea. The salmon come from the sea. And they sang this song and other songs all the way back toward their home. And it was getting darker. The sky was starting to turn a little bit dark blue on the horizon, but they noticed there was a rosy glow and oh, for heaven's sakes, they saw the warm rosy oranges and reds on their totem poles of their village. And they knew they were very, very close. So they shoved their canoe right back up onto the beach. And as they did, they saw lots and lots of people coming toward them, the villagers, their family and friends, all the people they knew. And the children were saying, they came back, look. And their mom and dad grabbed them up and they said, we had no idea if you were safe or not. We knew the storm was on the water. We didn't know what had happened to you. We are so glad. And they said, the earth takes care of us. And so the children decided to gaze around their familiar village and as they did, everybody started looking in their baskets and they said, oh my goodness, there are so many salmon in the baskets. We have never seen such a harvest before. You two are heroes. You have brought back enough salmon to last for a very long time. Our people will eat well. You are heroes. The children felt very proud of themselves. So they went and sat down on a log and they looked around at the beauty of the earth and they sang this song. <sighs> Where I sit is beautiful, beauty's all around. Forest, mountains, rivers, listen to the sound. Great love is circling all around me. Who I am is beautiful, Beauty is my song, body, mind, and loving heart. I'm happy and I'm strong. Great love is circling all inside of me. Great love is circling all inside of me. Oh. This is the end of the story. But before we close, I want you to stop and think about something. These two children were heroes, of course, but you too, you are also heroes. You are heroes in your own families. Think about all the things that you've been doing lately that maybe you don't normally do. Have you been doing extra work around the house? Have you been quiet when your parents needed to work? Have you been extra kind to people? And here's the big one. You've been staying away from your friends. You have been doing this to help the virus from keep from keeping in check so that it wouldn't spread as much. That was a big sacrifice and you're still doing it. You are heroes. And every time you do your work at home, when you don't have the inspiration of the people around you, the children, your friends around you, you're being a hero. I'm so, so glad
that you're doing all the things that you're doing, and I hope you're proud of yourself. You are heroes. You take good care.